new Canon 1DX Mark III. Now we spent around five, maybe six hours with the camera at Canon HQ, taking photos, taking video, and checking out everything that it has to offer. Now it's important to mention upfront that all the photos, all the video from the 1DX are from a pre-production version of the camera, so they are beta samples. But even with that said, this is a very special camera. So the 1DX Mark II was Canon's flagship camera. It came out in 2016, but even so, it's still now one of the better cameras available today. Whether you're shooting stills or video or a combination of the two, and this is something that Canon have definitely built on with the Mark III, keeping that kind of hybrid design. Now there's no point bringing out a successor unless it's gonna offer some decent upgrades. And we had a little look at the camera a couple of months ago when we went out to Canon before. We were able to look at it through a glass box and we got some of the spec, but there's still a lot left to find out. So it's been very exciting going up and actually finding out what the decent upgrades are. The Mark II was so good. And then this certainly feels like a significant upgrade. So let's start by talking about the sensor. So this is a brand new sensor designed for this camera. It's actually the same resolution as the Mark II, so 20.1 megapixels, which is actually fairly unsurprising, to be honest. The quality is fantastic. The colors are exactly as you would expect from a Canon, lovely and rich, with that exceptional Canon color science and the new low pass filter means it's actually capturing more detail as well. Now keeping that resolution at 20.1 megapixels actually feels like a very deliberate move as well. It means that there's enough detail there to work with, but the file size is not ridiculous. Now I shot RAW and JPEG and the RAW files were all between 20 and 28 megabytes, so certainly workable with. And that's important to consider because a lot of photographers use the 1DX system for a lot of kind of professional shoots where they need to be able to send things off quickly. And having that ability to send slightly smaller file sizes like that absolutely helps to achieve that. Now sticking on file sizes for a minute, it's also possible to shoot with 10-bit HEIF files, which are actually the same size as JPEGs, but capture more information. Now since we were there for the daytime, even though we were there for quite a long time, I couldn't actually do much with low light, but I did find the shadiest area that I could under the trees, and I cranked the ISO all the way up to 10,000, and it seemed to handle it absolutely no issues at all. I haven't used any kind of software to get rid of noise or anything like that, and I'm not overly surprised to be honest. The Mark II was also very, very good with high ISO shooting, and I'll certainly give this a more thorough test when we actually get our hands on it in the field. Now there's a new Digic processor in there as well, which is about 380 times faster than the Mark II. That is, that is a shocking statistic, but you can certainly feel it when you're shooting. And the Mark II was obviously no slouch, but the Mark III, the speed is incredible. You can actually shoot 16 frames per second with the viewfinder and 20 frames per second with the live view. And it'll hit about 1000 roars before it even starts to slow down. So I tried testing this out, but to be honest with you, I never actually got to a point where it was slowing down before I just had to stop anyway to stop my card from filling up. But at 16 frames a second, that should be enough, not just to shoot a 100 meter sprint, but you could capture an entire 400 meter race, which is crazy. You can shoot for about a minute without even slowing down. It gives a lot of flexibility to sports and wildlife photographers, and really anyone who wants to absolutely nail a moment. Now let's talk a little bit about autofocus, because if you've used Canon before, if you're familiar with the Canon dual pixel CMOS AF, you'll know that it works really well. It's fast, it's accurate, and generally speaking, it does what you want it to do. Now with the 1DX Mark III, Canon have really gone all out on the autofocus system. There's a whole new system built in here. They're actually using a CMOS sensor as the AF sensor for the first time ever. And that gives the autofocus 28 times more resolution to actually work with. And ultimately, more information means more accurate autofocus. And that's a lot more information to work with. 
On top of that, Canon have also implemented a deep learning algorithm, which actually makes it more reliable and more consistent. So things like being able to recognize a helmet or faces in odd positions, make things like, again, sports photography in particular, great to work with. Now you've got 191 autofocus points with 525 selectable autofocus areas, and it's able to focus down to minus four EV, so in deep shadow. And something which is great to hear is you'll get a very similar experience whether using the viewfinder or live view. So it's not so much of a trade-off when switching to the rear screen. Now, again, I tested this out a little bit, and for me, it seemed exactly the same. It seemed to be the same experience using viewfinder and live view. Now, whether we were shooting portraits or whether we were shooting continuous burst mode, with my model running, the camera always seemed to lock onto her, usually onto the face and the eyes, and tracked her perfectly through the scene. When I quickly turned to try and take a photo of a bird, it would just lock onto it immediately. No hunting, no getting focus and then recomposing. It just knew exactly what I was trying to do and it worked. When I was shooting portrait, it was going for the eyes. When I was shooting with a longer lens, with my model running again, it was going for kind of general head tracking and it just worked perfectly every time. Now, when I shot video with this, I actually got a little square come up just tracking her face around the scene as I was shooting. Again, no issues, didn't have to set anything up. It just knew what I was doing and, and just did it for me. It just took care of everything. This is probably one of the best autofocus systems all round that I've used in a camera. And that was just over sort of five or six hour shooting. So I'll be, I'll be interested to see what it's like kind of out in the real world, doing some low light and stuff like that. But from this first impression of it, it is astounding. It just works exactly as you'd want it to. Now I used the 1DX Mark II a lot for video. In fact, it's been one of my go-to video systems over the last couple of years. And Canon have been sure to continue this hybrid design with the Mark III. So since we've been talking about still photography, and since you would generally consider it to be a very good stills photography camera, it's also an incredible video system as well. And there's an incredible myriad of options for how you want to record video. And actually going into the menu itself is really quite impressive. But let's focus on some of the most impressive features it has to offer. So you've got 5.5K down sample to 4K raw video, and that's at 12 bit. You've got 4K 60p cropped or uncropped, 4K 24, 25 frames a second with autofocus, full HD 120 frames a second, and Canon log all in the camera. Now let's start off with that first one. If you're not familiar with raw video, you can think a little bit along the lines of the difference between raw photos and JPEG, and it gives you a good idea of how much of a big deal that is. It gives you such a huge amount of control over the final look of your footage. It's just an incredible tool for filmmakers and videographers. Now 4K 60p cropped or uncropped is a nice touch, since sometimes it can be advantageous to shoot in that super 35mm style, and it can give you a little bit of extra reach as well if you want to go with that. Now given that the 1DX Mark II already had 4K 60p and Full HD 120p, would it have been nice to see some slightly faster frame rates? Sure, I'm a little surprised not to see a slightly faster Full HD frame rate, but even so, with that said, the more I think about it, the video options here are so much more than just some higher frame rates. Yes, it's lovely to be able to say Full HD 240 frames a second, for example, but the number of options available in this camera and the fine control that you have in how you are actually going to capture that video is significantly more important than just a little bit slower motion that honestly, how often is it really gonna be used? If I had to choose, I would always choose the number of options that Canon are providing here with different formats for recording the video over essentially a slightly bit of slower motion. So finally then, let's talk a little bit about the build of this camera and some of the features actually inside. So again, if you've used the 1DX Mark II at all, you'll feel completely at home here. The button layout is the same, very much deliberately, and that's because at the heart of it, this is a tool, and there's no sense having to completely relearn the buttons and controls if you're used to the 1DX Mark II. The main difference on the back of this camera though is the AF point selector, which has a touch and drag system. Now at first, I wasn't sure about it, but I have to say, once you actually start using it, it is so much nicer to use than a joystick. 
and keeping it separate from the screen actually feels really nice. It feels like a natural evolution from using a joystick. The touchscreen is now a proper touchscreen, which is an extremely welcome thing. You could already use it as a touchscreen on the Mark II to select focus points and things like that in live view, but now you can use it in menus and pretty much all the time. No more having to cycle through every single menu just to get where you want to go. There have been upgrades to the connections as well, with high-speed communication being a key factor in the design of this camera. So the Ethernet connection is twice as fast, and you've got the separate Wi-Fi transmitter. You can get the WFT-E9, which is very much a future-proof system with things like MIMO technology, allowing you to connect to two Wi-Fi networks at the same time in case one goes down. Something that's gonna be very welcome to anyone who needs to send files quickly, let's say from a sporting event or something like that. Now, the camera itself is a little bit lighter than the Mark II, but the durability, the ruggedness, that's all actually been improved. Ultimately, this is designed, like I said before, as a tool, and it is designed to be reliable, so that no matter what, you are going to be able to get the shot. So it's designed to withstand hot weather, cold weather, bad weather. It's really the kind of system you can rely on. Now, if you, again, if you're familiar with the Mark II at all, you'll know that is, that's pretty much tank proof. You can throw almost anything at it and it'll be fine. And absolutely, this is designed in the same way. Even the shutter life has actually been increased to 500,000. Now, finally, let's just touch on the battery life because this is, this for me was one of the most incredible things. Now, I used just one battery for the whole time that I was using this camera. Now, again, I was using it for about five or six hours, taking photos, shooting continuously, shooting raw video, shooting high frame rate video, and I never even came close to needing to recharge the battery. The One DX Mark II already had an incredible battery life, getting about 1,210 shots from one battery, and the One DX Mark III, it uses the same battery but it gets 2,850 shots, which is absolutely outrageous. Now, hopefully we're gonna get our hands on this camera again in the near future to actually take it out in the field, maybe over a few days, record some video, take some photos, and really put it to the fullest of tests. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about the camera, pop them down in the comments below, and we'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. There's loads of interesting spec and details about this camera, so we can go over all of that. Of course, you can check the link in the description to go and check out the full spec, the full detail of the camera, over on our website. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. I'll see you in the next video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.